Salvatore Olinga is one of the remaining caretakers of the historical site. He begins by telling us the history and the importance attached to the fort that was formerly occupied by Arab traders as an administrative center of the then Lower Nile Equatorial Province. According to him, a center for tax collection at that time later became a slave trade center in 1850s. This was meant as trust because the Arabs has began taxing our natives or our grandparents to pay taxes in kind through millet grains and simsim grains. Meanwhile, they had their own measurements. Their measurements always were baskets with holes underneath. You bring in your millet or grain or simsim grains, you pour, and these things go, goes out from the bottom. And you are again sent for, for some more to come back. To the 78th year old Olinga and son of the land, those who resisted Arab taxes were raided from their villages, detained, prostituted, and executed. Chasing people from his homestead to homestead, trying to find out who exactly has, uh, exactly has paid or not, you are detained. And also, that means the same thing the Arabs began it from that time. When you fail to pay that in kind, and yes, seems some grains or millet grains have run out, you are detained here as a prisoner. That means it had, it had marked the beginning of the slave trade. Nevertheless, before execution, sorting could be done, and only to remain with the able and the youthful ones who could make it to the coast. The first three categories, the beautiful, strong and healthy ones, the youthful ones were the real items they were in need of because they were able to be moved on foot from here through the Sudan to Egypt then to be shipped across the Red Sea to the slave market. This is the courtyard where they were screened. The strong, healthy, beautiful ones were sorted out, leaving the ugly, weak, and the elderly ones were also sorted out. After execution, bodies of those executed could be left and only to be eaten by wild animals. Using access, their heads were beheaded, their heads were rolled down there. Bodies also were pushed down there. There was by then no burial ground. So all these bodies were eaten up by the hyenas and wild lions. And what put such a sad story to an end was the coming of Sir Samuel Baker in 1872. Baker intervened by 1872, captured this fort. August the second, he reached Uchejo Hill, captured this fort from the Arabs, and secured the place. That is why we call it Baker's Fort. Otherwise, it was first occupied by the Arabs as the camp or the base of trade. Lying about 25 kilometers northwest of Gold Town, the historical site has a few of its structures, such as the military store still standing farm. The rest of the structures are in the dire need of renovation. See how bush is, it is. That is a major challenge. You as a client or you as a visitor would not expect such a place and also when you move in you need money to pay because you are moving in what? In bushy places. The only thing is that you may find that will that intercept snakes there or what? According to Olinga, little is done to market Fort Patico. To him, visitors that would take more than two or three days can never stay longer due to lack of accommodation facility. We don't have any hotel here or any restaurant or any what to maintain them. Since we don't have it, that is another what another way to of the government to take over that challenge. Then what do we do to promote this place? 
Apart from the reception area renovated recently by government, the only two remaining staff of the seven that were once here can't do much to maintain the place up to required standards. And now, Patiko is only reduced to a name. Only thing I need to tell fellow Ugandans is that this fort has got to be really maintained and modified to the standard so that outside the world know exactly that when we are going to Uganda where Baker's fort is, we reach and find exactly if this fort really exists. Otherwise, in name and physically it exists, but it needs what? Renovation and, and modernization. Not only Sasamu fort at Patiko that is in the limbo, but also small forts still by the same name, such as that of Padibe and Papiri, which he built to check slave trade by the Arabs.